Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about which plants or which crops you absolutely cannot grow in Canada. And I'm gonna put a huge disclaimer on this. I'm not talking about you outliers out there uh, that live in the warmer climates of Canada or the ones that have high tunnels or outdoor grow tents. I'm talking about the vast majority of Canadian gardeners and those beginners that may exist. So one thing I learned very early on when I decided to start gardening, especially when I bought my first house and it was free, gr free range on what I could grow, I grew everything. My grandma, my mom who are watching this are probably rolling their eyes right now and literally thinking, yes, you guys have no idea the shit she tried to grow. Uh, but ultimately, a huge amount of them failed. And there's a lot of reasons for why they failed. And there's a lot of ways in which we can make them succeed. But ultimately, it all comes down to the budget. <laughs> so you can, of course, you know, invest money in high tunnels and crazy outdoor cropping systems, that sort of stuff. But ultimately, if you are in a budget, you're a beginner gardener, you have limited space, or you want to just grow a garden to have produce to eat rather than grow a garden for Instagram worthy photos, there are some crops to stay away from. So I'm gonna start off the video with the crops that are difficult to grow from seed and some of the alternatives you can go with. Then I'm gonna get into something we call growing degree days. I'm not gonna go into a ton of depth there, but I want you guys to understand what that definition means to the scientific community and to you as gardeners. And then if you want more info on growing degree days, how to calculate it, that sort of thing, please let me know in the comments down below and I will make a separate video. And then we're gonna talk about the actual seed packets. And when we do have these really high quantity days, um, grow degree days plants, how we can succeed with them by just adjusting some factors. If money is not an issue, money and space aren't an issue for you, then I will show you or teach you how to grow these or the factors you need to mitigate in order to grow these here in Canada. So my list consists of plants that usually take anywhere from 150 to 200 days. Now there are plants out there that will say days to mature 120. These are also plants, again, that are really difficult to grow in Canada, and you may want to rethink it, especially if you're some of the lower zones, I would say zone six, seven and lower. You may wanna reevaluate re things that lie around that 120 day mark. So the first one up is onions by seed, and this I don't say as something you cannot grow this is something that you need to start soon so February March January for some of us even out in BC you can actually start these in January indoors go for it onions are biannual plants meaning the first year they make the bulb the second year they make the flower the sets you purchase that are not seeds set technically the second year of growth but they've just been stopped halfway through their first so people who sell sets for example those are plants that were planted in the middle of last summer and then allowed to grow until fall they were harvested in the fall start stored over winter and now being sold in the store. So they're like six month old seeds, basically is what it comes down to. So if you start your onions from seeds, you do wanna start them relatively soon. And if you are in Canada, you wanna go with the long day options. So I, if you guys follow the Gardening Canada website, like the gardeningcanada.net website, over there you've probably realized I've slowly started adding how to grow blah, 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 insert name of vegetable or flower in Canada. And in that, I'm going through how to exactly grow that vegetable or flower plant in Canada. And so I've had, I put things like leeks, onions, um, Brussels sprouts. There's actually someone on the Ontario Gardeners Facebook forum that posted my article that I had written and they're like, we, I use this, I'll insert a photo if I, I still have it. Anyway, someone ended up DMing me that was in that Facebook group and was like, oh my God, I just saw 
just saw this guy post this and I noticed it was your website. So on that, I'm doing like how to grow. So on that website, I'm doing like a how to grow basically. So if you have any really specific crops that you want to learn to grow, let me know in the comments down below and I will get those to you. But one of them I did was onions. So in that I explained seeds versus sets, when to start seeds versus sets, uh, transplanting outdoors, all that fun jazz. <laughs> and I also included um the varieties that i enjoy or the varieties that i find for the most part get large same with the i did a leak post as well that's another one that you're gonna have to start here relatively soon they need to be started early and again i posted links to the seed varieties that i like to use and i used the canadian company it's going to be either zappa seeds or it's going to be the west coast seed brand depending on what's available and exactly what brands i've used and which ones i enjoy so the next one is artichoke so the jerusalem artichoke is a plant i tried to grow last year i failed at it but i was so excited about it it did really well and decoratively as a plant it was beautiful now i failed at it because i'm quite honestly i i think i failed at it because it got too hot too quick here in saskatchewan so we're kind of like an arid environment so we're kind of close to a desert almost sometimes and so it got too hot too quick and we'll talk about that a little bit later so if you want to grow artichokes for a decorative piece like as a thriller in your pot there's absolutely no reason why you can't they do very well and i did get one to flower however the other two didn't just put that into perspective. So if you choose to plant them, they will grow, they will live. The question isn't that. The question is whether or not they're going to actually make the flower that you're, you will eventually eat is more so the question there. So the next one is eucalyptus. This one's super popular right now. There's a lot of cut flower farmers talking about it. Um, I personally like it. I personally have grown it. Eucalyptus is something that should be started here December and January. February is getting a little bit too late. I'm working on a blog post about how to grow eucalyptus from seed or just general in your garden. Um, it's something obviously you can use. People use it for essential oils, obviously cut dry um, decorate, decorations, putting in the shower, all that fun stuff. And it's not that you can't grow eucalyptus. The issue I find with growing it in Canada is it doesn't tend to be particularly bushy. Now, my thought process as to why it doesn't really bush out comes down to more so the fact that it's not top. So I see a lot of people grow this and they don't top it. And I'm guilty of this too. Anytime I've gotten it, I've shied away from topping it because I did want a big plant. And I thought maybe if it just was in full sun or in really high sun conditions, that it would just bush out naturally. And it doesn't seem to be the case. Now I am gonna do a video separate on topping and kind of the science behind what's going on there and why you would top a plant. But any plant, you tend to top such as eucalyptus or pepper plants for example do need to be started earlier in the year now keep in mind with the eucalyptus the purpose of growing it in Canada would be purely for foliage purposes which is what the eucalyptus plant is intended for anyways you wouldn't get seed the days to maturity are way too big I think it's like 200 some days to maturity and that would be set seed now when you can harvest or cut it is completely based on preference and what kind of look you're going for but anywhere from 150 to 200 days it's going to start its flowering cycle so just something to keep in mind so one i actually was asked this question about was eggplants and a lot of people asked if you can grow eggplants in canada or just in cold climates in general and the answer is yes it is possible now i do realize eggplants have an incredibly long growing season but there are plenty of hybrids out there and again i will leave the links for those down below in the description if you're looking for some hybrids that maybe have a shorter growing period also i'll leave i'll tell you what i'll leave the links down below for the artichoke the eucalyptus the leeks the onions the eggplants everything i'm talking about today i'll leave the links for down below the ones that i've tried to grow and the ones i've had moderate success with meaning greater than 
25% of my, or let's do 30, greater than 30% actually yielded the end result I was looking for and weren't just like a crappy hybrid of sorts. So um, eggplants is another one. You can get hybrids with a lower number of days and you can get ones that have like 200 growing degree days, which is just insane. But ultimately the question here is starting them early indoors and uh, the number of growing degree days and the number of growing days in your area. Eggplants, we'll get into why they're difficult to grow in Canada. I know lots of people have had success with these. A lot of them might the subscribers on this channel, a lot of you guys have had success with these. So I know, I can't remember who it was last year, mentioned eggplants and growing them, but if you could leave your methodologies down in the comments below, it's gonna help an enormous amount of people. And then of course, if you guys want a blog post on how to grow eggplants in Canada, let me know and I will also get that to you. I'm gonna need that subscribers info though, because that is just one plant I've never honestly grown, mostly because I think it's disgusting. <laughs> So the next one is melons. I think I've talked about melons before and my heartache with them. So people who know me in my personal life know my absolute favorite fruit on this planet is watermelon. I love watermelon. I'm completely obsessed with it. Watermelons and strawberries, obsessed. But the issue is that in Canada, I find it really difficult to get the melon all the way to maturity, especially where I am here in zone three. But we'll go over some tips and tricks you can try to help you get there potentially. Quite honestly, some years it works, some years it doesn't. And again, it depends on the hybrid that you're using. So I will include links down below for versions that have a lower growing degree days like they don't need as many growing degree days as some of these big texas beauties that have those ones i quite honestly it's you're not going to grow them here that's just bar none you're not going to grow them so the next one is lavender lavender is a biannual unfortunately that means even if you started them by seed in some cases I'll leave a link down below for the one variety that I have had luck getting to flower in the first year. Um, but ultimately the, the lavender plant is a biennial. So the first year is foliage mostly. And in this case it would be more like grassy stuff um, coming up. And then the second year is actually the flowering year. And that means you have to overwinter these. So overwintering tropical plants or not even tropical plants plants that still have to go into a state of dormancy is like a whole other ball game we would have to get into for that one but lavender is another one i get asked about all the time and it does not work the next one on the list makes me sad and it is unfortunately the peacock plant um or the pompous grass some people call it this i tried to grow last year for the first time ever my friend's wedding was pompous grass theme <laughs> so and I was a bridesmaid so I thought it was my duty to make this happen and so I tried desperately but again it's a biannual that is massive so it packs on foliage like crazy but ultimately the end result is less than stellar but they do still sell them in Canada which is super irritating and ultimately the purpose of the whole video in general is they do sell seeds in Canada to Canadians that maybe not necessarily will survive in Canada for Canadians which is just crazy to me because it's a waste of your money the next one is loofah <laughs> so Kevin at Epic Gardening has like the loofah challenge every year and I think it's kind of funny because I believe the premise for why he did it is because he it was like one of those plants that he had a really hard time growing. So loofahs are cool, very, very cool plant. And it is another plant that you, again, can grow in Canada, but with less than stellar results. So depending on your space and your time and your budget, it may not be a plant you want to go with, but ultimately uh, it something has to be started indoors and generally doesn't do very good. So you're probably wondering, why do people show themselves growing this stuff in Canada? How do people do it? And there's a whole host of different reasons. The first one being the variety they chose was had or has a lower number of growing degree days. 
Uh, the next option is that they have a real slick setup. So they have a greenhouse, a high tunnel, a low tunnel. They have some investment in infrastructure that makes that possible. So I have two options here. I'm going to cover the labels on what company this is because I have issues with this company. Sometimes their seeds work, sometimes they don't. And I don't want to slam them by any means because I do buy seeds from them. But I don't want you guys to buy seeds from them because then you'll be like, they didn't work. And I didn't want you to, I don't want you to give me shit. So um, gourds, these birdhouse gourds I tried to grow before. I, I'm going to do a separate video on how to grow these. And the other one is loofah, so gourds. <laughs> Just gourds in general are difficult to grow in Canada. But one thing you'll notice and what I find really irritating is on the back, it'll say days to maturity. And this one says for lupa, it's only 55 to 70 days. Like that's irritating because it's not 55 to 75 days. Um, this one doesn't even have, no, it doesn't even have the number of growing degree days. It just says start indoors early. So.